Welcome to Kalamazoo Air Museum. So, if you want to make your own electricity, one solar panel at a time, my uh, summertime electric bills are between 35 and 45, and my winter, 60 to 65 dollars a month. Those links are down below. I'm bringing great content, even if it's not solar. Great things. So, Kalamazoo Air Museum today. This is the Grumman Wildcat, if I remember right. So, not the Jeep, the airplane. <laughs> it's pretty amazing. So, I'm going to take you around. I'm going to read it off the board. Here's some interesting things of, I believe it was from a school. They recovered it from the water. 200 feet deep, December 7, 2012, after 68 years underwater. And they restored it. That is amazing. This is, yeah, the Grumman Wildcat. One of the gentlemen here, Fred, he's a speaker. He told me this retracts into the bird. The pilot, after taking off from the ship, has to spin a crank, I believe he said 27 times, to get the wheels up inside. That's that's crazy cool information. This one has three blades. And I want to show you before I start reading. Looks like eight or more engines in there. Look at all those little engines. Wow. The Grumman Wildcat. Wildcat was designed by Grumman Aircraft Corporation and used as a, a standard single seat mono wing shipboard U.S. Navy fighter when lost my place. The U.S. entered World War II in December 1941. It first flew in September 1937 and was accepted by the Navy in August 1939. It, its military designation was F4F. The French and British governments also ordered the F4F, but the British called it the Marlette, or the Marley, whatever. The F4F became the first U.S. designed aircraft to shoot down a German plane, the Junkers Ju-88, on December 25, 1940. In early 1942, production of F4F was transferred to General Motors Eastern Aircraft Division and designed FM. The FM-2 Wildcat featured at the Air Zoo is depicted in the paint sheen of aircraft operating from the escort carrier Corregidor in the Pacific Theater. The composite squadron was comprised of fighters and bombers. The Wildcats fought in all major battles in the Pacific, along with the P-40 it was one of the only U.S. fighters in operation from the beginning to the end of the World War. The, uh, according to Navy statistics, it had a victory to loss ratio of 6 to 9, 1. Okay, and then we're going to go on here. Historic Mechanical Engineering Landmark, Grumman Wildcat, the stow wing, wing folding mechanism. On this side, you can see it's folded. And here we have a, a little display as to how it folds. Pretty interesting. And I uh, got permission to sneak in. <laughs> so you can see it's a little dark back here. Pretty cool. So now I'm going to finish reading that because I think it's pretty amazing. I'll show you the engine. 
Wildcat's innovative stow wing mechanism developed on the XF4F4 prototype by Leroy Grumman, 1895 to 1982. The founder of Grumman Aircraft Engineering Corporation was crucial to the U.S. Navy's success during World War II. On board an aircraft carrier, the stow wing mechanism folded the wings parallel to the fuselage in the sweeping motion, reducing the aircraft's overall size and allowed easier movement around the ship and increased the carrier's aircraft capacity by 50%. The simple design had the rugged, ruggedness and reliability required for carrier service, and it became the model for many subsequent naval aircraft. That's pretty cool. I like this stuff. Maybe someday I'll be a guest speaker. <laughs> and have a nice sunny day.